Hello everyone, and welcome to your 100th episode of One Man and His Boat. Hello everyone and a very warm welcome indeed to your 100th episode of One Man and His Boat. Thank you so much for sticking with us if you stuck with us from the beginning and for anybody new to the channel, you're more than welcome to join us. Uh, yes, it has been a wee while since I've done my last vlog and I'm, I'm sorry about that. I mean I had a vision of my 100th episode would be the boat on the floor, rolled out the shed, everything would be all hunky-dory, Jack and Ori and unfortunately it, it hasn't turned quite out that way. Yes, my reality to my fantasy is completely two different things. And I will go into my complications later in this vlog, uh, but I just wanted to explain to you guys that it has been a wee bit of a roller coaster since my last episode. And before I get into uh, giving you guys a quick catch up since our last episode, uh, I'd like to dedicate this vlog to two of our followers who are sadly no longer with us. To say that we're uh, devastated to find out the news of their passing is an understatement. And our deepest condolences go to the family and friends of two of our biggest supporters. Uh, we dedicate this to you guys. So my lovelies, where did we get to? Well, uh, yes, I was all excited about getting the boat out of the shed. It took me four days just to polish up the cat catcher. That was the start of it. <laughs> I thought, oh, this will be a five minute job. Eh, eh, not so e easy, I can assure you that. Then I had problems with my lights. So I had to rewire the whole system here. That took me two days. And then we had some family matters to contend with. Yes, my mother is expecting after about 30 years is getting a new kitchen and she needed her, uh, her son to go down and basically strip her old kitchen out and that took me a few days to get through as well. In between that time, we have had the electrician up. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the storm interrupted us, so yes, uh, things kind of went amiss. And as we were... Um, trying to fit electrical equipment, uh, we ran into a little problem. I'll show you what the problem is now. So ladies and gentlemen, we've got all these dials wired up, we've got our fuel, that works perfectly, we've got our exhaust alarm, that works perfectly, and the man overboard system doesn't work perfectly. <laughs> right guys, the failed man overboard system, uh, we had a little test of it. And basically, it started off very well indeed. It was all doing what it was supposed to be doing. And we tested it four times. Now, first time, I got to Brian's truck. Second time, it was to the sign at the back of Brian's truck. Third time was a junction at the bottom of the road. And the fourth time was halfway between the junction and the house. Now that's supposed to be 50 metres away from the boat. Uh, before it kills the engine, and it never did. Uh, so we're thinking about scrapping the whole system, and this system is not cheap, you're back into 500 pounds, uh, because we're kind of relying on it, guys. Uh, it never did what it was supposed to do at the engine end, and yeah, I'll give you its fair due, this system is for outboards, but at the end of the day, the electrician says the whole system will do what it's meant to do to any engine. It's just that it's more practical for outboards to fit. Uh, 
Yes, so as you can tell, I was, wouldn't be pleased at losing £500 to begin with, or the big safety net if an accident should happen, i.e. I fall overboard, the boat's not going to steam away from me. So what we're doing now is we're going to fit a little kill switch here. Now my idea is, you'll have the bait box here, you've only got this little gap here to shoot the creels, and if I do get a bite on my leg from the rope, all I have to do is lie in the deck, give that a wee tap, and there you go, that should kill the engine dead. And hopefully I'll be able to save myself from going overboard. Hopefully it never happens, but with fishing, you can never say never, that's for sure. It's just a matter of when. Uh, I've already had my experience about going over the side when I was 12 years old, and I'm never going to do that again. <laughs> right, boys and girls, after the electrician had been, ah, uh, he had told me that I had earthed my engine slightly wrong, and I wanted to go through with you guys exactly what I did wrong. Now, when I done the earthing on this, I was still had the rock copper in my head, however, that was a completely different engine to this one. Now the rock hopper, it was an insulated engine, which means it doesn't quite need earth as much as what this one does, which is a negative return engine. So what does that mean? That be means basically this thing here, this thing here is a big battery. You get your positive feed in, your negative feed out, and if you don't earth it, it's going to start eating all the soft metals, i.e. all your aluminium, all your uh, copper pieces. So you've got to earth it and earth it well. So ladies and gentlemen, we're underneath the boat here. Yes, this is what I do for you guys. Uh, and I just wanted to give you a quick run through about the people that don't know what an anode is and what it does. Now, this is your anode, this is a pair anode. And basically this piece here is your sacrificial piece. It is connected by a bar completely through the middle. And what happens is these, as you can see, it's got two holes. These two holes, going on to your studs, it gets fastened in and then on the reverse side, inside the boat that's where your wires are connected to and that makes the earthen circuit so I've got one earthen wire coming into this bolt and one earthen wire exiting that bolt so in theory, this piece here over time should uh, dissolve away uh, if over time and it doesn't dis it dissolve away, they're, um, we're in trouble, our earthing is wrong and there's something wrong and something inside the boat will be getting eaten instead of this. So I hope that makes it a little bit clearer about what an anode is and what an anode does. Right ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm sorry for changing camera but we're in the guts of the boat here and the sound quality might be a little bit different. Now when I told you to earth in a previous vlog, I told you all to earth at one point, that was completely wrong, that's for insulated engines only, for negative returns like ours we have to connect both sides that way when you put the anode on these two studs are connected now when I had done the wiring up I was lucky because all I had extra length in my earthen wire and all I had to do was transfer one wire from here to over there now this wire over here is the main engine one now eh, and this one here is the diesel tank so that's enough to connect it. However, however, what I didn't know was, is your oil cooler. Obviously, electrical current can't pass through water, so you have to connect each end of your, your oil cooler. Uh, anywhere where there's a rubber part, you put a bridge between it. So the, the flow of the static electricity can go on to the main body to then be dispatched to the anode. And another wee top tip guys, don't just trust one connection. This is my gearbox end. I don't care if you can see that, let's go down here. That's my gearbox earthing. If that fails, i.e. by poor connection or it gets loose over time with vibration, What's to stop the, the current from building up? Nothing. So I put another a secondary wire in to the main anode. Um, just on the lifting block there. 
the lifting lug. So, yeah. So all we've got to do now is basically open block out all the light. Here's a minute. Obviously, this is your this is your water pump. This is your intake. I've got this earthed, but there's nothing earthing in between this and this. And obviously, moving fluid is going to build up static. So I need to do something from here to here because this is a rubber part. There's a rubber connection as well. So we could we could actually earth that to there and then that to there and then that would give you a full loop. I think that's a better solution. So guys, another wee top tip. Yes, I'm full of them today. Uh, I just want to give you a quick run through on what we're going to do today. If you're connecting this to this, you have to connect it onto bare metal. You can't have any paint on. If you're using, especially if you're using one of these, um, what you're wanting, I don't know if you can see in there. Sorry for the camera work. It's basically, oh, I don't. If you can see under there, where my fingernail is, that is a uh, bare metal. So it's got a good connection all the way underneath this fitting. And then obviously it passes through the wire and into your header tank. Now we have to do, oh God. Now we have to do the same here. We have to take the paint off, then put our strapping on and then find a point here. And then we'll be doing the same down here. We'll be using the foot of the strainer and then coming up up to the opposite side why the opposite side is because we want equal pressure on the plate if i have it both at one side it might weaken the plate at one point so we'll go to the other side right let's get on with it shall we So guys, I'm sorry to interrupt your programming once again, but I'm always doing that, so you should be used to me by now. Um, for those of you that follow us on social media, you know what's coming next. Uh, and for the rest of you that just follow us on YouTube, big announcement. Yes, I get a lot of questions asked, when's the Lindsay B being launched? Well, Lindsay and I have thought long and hard on it, and you can see the setbacks that we've had and we've just decided that we're basically we're not going to launch it this winter because uh, well basically we've it's been in good stead actually because we've just been hammered with two storms within two days each other and we're expecting the third tomorrow <laughs> so to us there was no point putting the boat in just to sit in the harbour and basically no day nothing um, we, we, we wouldn't, it wouldn't be safe to fish especially with a new vessel because yes i know the vessel inside and out but I don't know what she's like at sea. Going to sea is a completely different ball game. You guys that are experienced in this, you will know. For those that you don't know, new boat, winter time, it's not a good idea. It really isn't. So we're going to leave it till March, maybe, well, late March, beginning April, we'll see. And that'll be a definite because it'll not take me long to get the finishing touches done now. Uh, I'm actually still considering rolling it out the shed as well because I need to get these stays uh, made and hung up as well so yes guys so there we go we're hoping march april for a uh, launching 
Um, hopefully I'll tie it in with the yachts going in and I can make another video on that as well, eh? <laughs> so, stay tuned guys. We are going to have other videos as well. They will be smaller and compact because, like I say, there's not much to do. Uh, I've got a few ideas here and there that I'm going to do. And yes, I need to get the camera out a, lot, a little bit more than I have been doing. But stick with us, guys. It is going to be an adventure. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you didn't mind my little montage there of Dunbar Harbour after the aftermath of the storm that we had on the southeast coast. Yes, we absolutely got battered by Storm Arwen, and uh, yes, that is the remnants of what's left of the guy's gear. So obviously the poor fishermen are going to spend all winter making new gear or repairing old gear, and I don't think there was a boat 
certain boats that were not touched with this storm, so it just shows you how big it was. Um, right, what am I going to get on with now? Now, uh, I'm expecting the electrician coming at either end of this week or beginning of next, that's us into Christmas week. And basically, since we fitted this new lovely manual kill switch, I want to make sure that the engine can run for him coming because there's no any better way to make sure that your system actually works to see it actually running practically. So what I'm going to do now is bleed the fuel system, uh, top up the filters and I'm going to actually fill up the hydraulic tank as well because you should never run a, pump, a hydraulic pump dry. Uh, just in case anything's engaged that's not meant to be engaged by accident or there's things amiss, we're just going to fill up the fluids anyway. So we're one step closer now to actually finishing the engine end of things. Once the electrician's been, double check my wire, everything will get wrapped up, everything will get put away and then we can start cleaning the engine bay. At long last, she'll be finito. Another tick off the box. All we need now is spring.
So guys, it's a cold and frosty morning here on One Man and His Boat and it is chill factor 100. Oh, it's so cold. However, I've, uh, well, I've not had any news, but I've got news for you guys. It doesn't look like the electrician's coming this side of Christmas. So I'm now bored. I've got nothing to film. I've got nothing to do. <laughs> I'm even doing my brother's uh, electrics for his sheep shed. That's how bored I am. So I thought I'd uh, do a little bit of one man and his boat theme and we'll, let's talk about our favourite subject, the anode. Yay! I know, I'm bored with it as well, guys. Anyway, it's the age-old question, which way do you put your anode? Well, this is a pair anode. And well, I want to talk to you quickly about hydrodynamics. Hydrodynamics is the same as aerodynamics for an aeroplane, except obviously it's in the water. Now, when things are in the water and they're moving, you've got a higher resistance, i.e. friction, which causes the drag effect. Now, I've seen a lot of gentlemen, when they're putting their anodes on, put their anodes on this way. Now, I've been told for guys years year in advance than I, and well experienced, not just fishermen, but boat builders as well, that you shouldn't put your anodes this way, because this is obviously with the shape of the pair, this is going to create the most resistance. So we need to turn it that way, smallest end first, fattest end at the back, because uh, nine times out of 10, your boat is going forward. So this is why you have your anode facing with the smallest end at the front and it will create the least friction. There you go, eh? You probably all knew that anyway. So what I want to do now is I want to show you guys exactly what anodes we're putting on the Lindsay B and why we're putting them on. Right guys, these are the anodes that we're going to be putting on the Lindsay B. I've got one for the mechanical side, one for the electrical side, two for the skeg and two for the rudder. Uh, I think that's more than enough for the size of vessel that we've got for uh, helping the electrosis. So we'll go and get them fitted, shall we? It's just because I'm bored. I'm going to have to take them off actually when I paint. <laughs> Christmas, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I hope Santa was good to you all. Um, that's the end of your vlog, and unfortunately, that's your last vlog for 2021. Yes, we've decided we're going to have a good break and basically recover from what a difficult year it's been. Uh, as you all know, we've had the tradesmen uh, kept us back, 
uh, oh, you name it, it's done it. But we'll look on the brighter side of life. Next year's another year, a fresh start, and hopefully at the start of the year we'll get this beauty out the shed. So you're going to have to stay tuned for it, guys. Have a good Christmas, have a prosperous New Year's, and from our families to yours, all the very best. Oh, it's cold. Um, then we've ha had... <coughs> How come I always get a frog in my throat when I'm talking? <clears throat> the whole system is the right... Now this is meant to be 50 metres. Hold on, I better make sure you're in focus. Now we're fine. Right boys and girls, um, basically after... Which is a negative... Now, <laughs> I off with this pad and then put it onto the other, and then that was from the main engine. Oh, Jesus! Oh, dear. Oh. Oh. You've no idea what I do for you, folks. I tell you. <coughs> right ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> there's a the frog again. Right, right ladies and gentlemen, we're underneath the boat here and I just wanted to give those of you that don't know a run through about what an anode and what it does. Now this is your pair anode. Um, Obviously it's got the, the brand name on it. Is it upside down? It is upside down. <laughs> I'll try that again. Take two. So guys, another wee top tip. Yes, I'm fully of them today. <laughs> oh god, there's a frog pack. <laughs> nice talking, mere working bars. That's what YouTube's all about, it's more work, eh, more leathering. <laughs> Plus you're at that stage, son. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm twittering on again. Right, oh. Yeah. Right, boys and girls, ladies and... Which causes the Harry, oh. see how it goes? Okay. Still get my Christmas jumper, Caleb. Stand back a bit, stand more that way so you can hear there. But they'll know hear me! Hello! What do you think? Yeah. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, can you see my hair? <laughs> I think they can. <laughs> see, that's not how we, we normally do it. Is it not? Do no. you have it thingied in? Usually have it thingied in. And I'll put my Santa hat on. Oh, you're all, you're all wonky. You're wonky fired it. 
But there we go, that's better. Merry Christmas, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I hope Santa's been good to you all. Um, that's the end of your vlog. I, uh, yes. I, uh, yes. See, that's because, that's because you're standing here. No, it's not really. I did that the time killer, honestly. All the very best. Have a good Christmas. Have a pur pur blah, blah.